All right. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, good morning. Good morning, man. What's afternoon, brother? Come on, man. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the time change, you know? <laughs> yeah, man, we changed the time, man. Good morning, man. Happy New Year to you, bro. Hey, good Happy New Year to you as well. Good to see you on this side of 2021. And good to see you guys as well on this side of 2021. We have made it and we are excited about this year. Good afternoon. It's our new time, 12 o'clock. We are starting from now on until further notice for wordplay. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, man. So we made it to another year um, and uh, super excited that we get a chance again to to be before you all. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, once again, uh, you made it. You know, we in a brand new slate. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been given a brand new 365. Well, I guess that's what, 362 now or yeah. so? <laughs> Yeah, it's already started. It's already started. Come on, it's already started. But this is our new time, 12 p.m. So we're excited, man. So again, I am already on Butler. Man, it's your man, J.D. August. Yes, sir. And so um, again, for those who've been rocking with this, you already know what it is. You already know what to expect. But I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure there's a lot of folks who do not. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but I want you to help us out. Go ahead and share the broadcast um, because we got some things in store for you that you do not want to miss. Um, so again, you guys probably have already started seeing some of the new things we've been sharing from our need a word page and things like, uh, again, our spirit led Saturdays. Oh my gosh. It's been an amazing with, um, prophet Tavares Butler sharing a word, uh, what God is saying uh, to us. So that's our spirit led Saturdays. Obviously, you know what time it is today, which is our word play, but yeah. then also JD, tell the people what, what, what they have in store for tomorrow, man. Hey, wake up early tomorrow morning. Early bird catches the worm, uh, 7 a.m. or 7.30, actually. I gave you a little bit of time to sleep in for uh, um, minding my business, just minding my business for all my entrepreneurs, professionals, business owners, anyone with a goal and a vision for this year, you want to tap into that, 7.30 a.m. right here on Either Word with your man, J.D. August. And then, of course, Wednesday, we got the Word of the Day Wednesday. And then Friday, what's happening on Friday? Well, Friday, brother, we have what's called Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights, where uh, the, the purpose of the show is to enlighten you um, and dive deeper into the word of God. Um, you might have caught this past Friday, which is a, a snippet of what's to come, was uh, I had an opportunity to, to deliver a word to a church and I shared it on our Friday Night Live uh, playlist. So you wanna go ahead and check that out if you have not caught that message. Um, do so. But what we have on Fridays, we're going to be using uh, the same kind of concept, but just deeping, uh, going deeper into the word of God, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us into the things of God, especially based off of what we've shared today. So whatever it is that come about today, come back on Friday. We're going to break it down even more um, as it yeah. pertains to the word of God. So I'm excited about that for yeah. our uh, Friday night lights, bro. Definitely. And today is today. It is Sunday. It is wordplay. Let me tell you all a little bit about wordplay or what you're about to review and participate in in just a few minutes. Um, we are doing wordplay. Uh, in just a moment, my brother and I are going to bring on the screen a random word generator. One of the most spontaneous ways of uh, receiving the word God and also of getting encouragement and inspiring. Um, quite prophetic, actually. So three random words are going to come on the screen. We're going to do them one at a time. Uh, so that's three rounds of random words, and we're going to just bounce back and forth and uh, look to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to really get some insight and something that we can share with you. We're doing this because we know there's going to be a relevant word for you. You will leave encouraged. You will leave inspired. You will leave motivated if you tune in and tap in. Um, so join us for that on the fourth round. We give it back to the audience. We take away the word generator, and we get a fourth random word from the audience live and we take that word. Basically what you're gonna hear is a streamlined message directly for you at a time such as this and we see the words the same time that you do. So it's kind of fun, uh, really exciting stuff and we're gonna get started, no more delays and get you right into 2021 with the first episode to see what thus says the Lord. <laughs> All right, so you know what time it is. It's about to go down. down. Here we go. Get it.
All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring in our word generator. Um, yeah. Again, for those of you that are very familiar with how this goes, uh, again, simply we're going to click on the new word and whatever word that is, J.D. and I, once again, um, lean led by the spirit is going to be able to share uh, some things um, to encourage, inspire, provoke um, you to thinking about things a little differently. And so we're excited for doing just that. And this is the new year, 2021. Um, so I'm ready to get started, man. You ready? Let's get it. I'm ready. Let's get it. Here we go. The first word of 2021. Here we mm -hmm. go, man. Here we go. Peck. Okay. Um, <laughs> he got no peck. That I mean, sounds like a new year's resolution. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. Wow. Um, so here, here's the thing, man. I mean, why not kick off the new year with the word peck? Wow. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of different ways we could take that. Um, yeah. So, JD, um, am I going to kick this off, you know, or are you going to kick this off? We always go back and forth, but this is yeah. New year. Yeah, I'm so curious on how you're going to kick this off <laughs> in the 2021. Y'all listen in. I'm listening, too. I want to see what he does with this one. Yeah, this this is going to this is going to challenge me. And again, this is this is real life. Right. Yeah. And so there's a couple of things that comes to mind when I hear the word or see the word peck. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is a um, couple of things. First thing is a pecking order right mm -hmm. there's some things in a pecking order depending on where you fall where you fit uh there's some things that happen there um and I, and that comes to mind initially was like the pecking order and and things that happen in a sequence uh depending on where you fall in that order so i i'm, I'm also reminded of a, a pecking order but there's another thing that comes to mind when i see peck i think of a bird Mm -hmm. I think of like the bird the beak, the idea of pecking as far as um, eating is concerned. Um, mm -hmm. Pecking as far as um, eating like uh, from their beak, they're going down and they're picking up the small things um, with their beak. I believe that's another uh, form of peck there. Mm -hmm. they're, they're pecking at the food that's there. And so why not just start there? Um, yeah. And the idea of just as peck or pecking um, is concerned is the food um, that is on the ground that the birds uh, begin to use their beaks in order to to eat. And so I'm, I'm thinking and again, this is all uh, fresh, um, but the idea of peck as it relates to you and I individuals, people is that there's some things that you, you may have to go down um, to get as far as the food is concerned that's on the ground. And I'm thinking of the birds and what they eat, what they consume. Uh, seeds is one. Um, bread is another. And um, I'm reminded of instances where I know my wife would take the kids sometimes to the lake and will feed the birds, but they would throw the bread out and the, you will see the birds come together and they're, they're pecking at it and eating the bread that was that was left behind by, by my wife and my kids that were throwing out. I'm also reminded of like bird seeds and seeds mm -hmm. uh, that they would eat. And so obviously there's some parallel and symbolisms there in the bread of life or the bread, their resource, the um, the nourishment aspect of what God leaves for us. Um, yeah. But also the seed is another type of symbolism in where the seed that's left on the ground um, for us to be able to consume or pick up as as well. So as it retains to peck and I'm, I'm looking at it as far as um, something the birds uh, they eat, but this is their way of eating is they peck the food, they pick the food up, but it also uh, deals with um, their ability to eat, their ability to to find those things um, that they need in order to gain nourishment. But even mm -hmm. the small things, such as the seeds, I mm -hmm. believe is something that we could use as um, to sustain us. But we have to look for them. We have to go down 
to get it. It's not going to just fall in our laps. I believe there's some things that we may have to go down and pick up mm -hmm. um, what God has dropped, if that makes sense. You know, um, mm -hmm. are you picking pick that up? up dropping, right. <laughs> but it's yeah, that I believe that God has already gone before us. I know I taught um, on this past Friday. Mm -hmm. about things that God has already left behind. Like he's going about the year as it states mm -hmm. in Psalm 65 and 11, like he crowned mm -hmm. the year um, mm -hmm. with goodness, but it kind of denotes the aspect of what God's left behind for us. Like he set up already, left some things behind for us to, to eat some things to take advantage of some things to use. And so even as the bird, there's things that's left behind for the birds to, to eat. Um, I'm looking at even the, the worm at times, the, the, the bird being able to find the food uh, to nourish their young uh, and be able to regurgitate it back to their young. And I'm, I'm thinking of the aspect of the seeds and the things that we consume of being able to regurgitate it back to those who, you know, follow us or our kids um, being able to regurgitate those things that we consume so that they can eat. Um, as well, but it comes with the seed, the bread, all of these are things that we should take up, but also not just keep for ourselves, but also be able to regurgitate them and share um, with those who are around us. So I, I want to start there with, with Pat, but um, but what are your nice. thoughts on that so far, bro? Nice, nice. Um, really good foundation that laid. And I think that the direction, because there's, uh, again, so many directions that we can go uh, with this word, but I'm going to follow the stream of my brother here with the, uh, the definition of pack being the eating of a bird um, with its beak. See, now here's the thing. When it comes to a bird, the pecking is normal. That is what they are supposed to do. Right. They're supposed to peck at their food with their beak. But have you ever seen someone, I think of my sister, who pecks at her food? which means that she eats it in very small quantities, um, mm. like a bird does. See, for a bird, that is acceptable, but for a human being, since we are larger in mass, to peck at your food means that you are eating it not in a normal way that a human being is eating it, right? Which means okay. that your ability to really become full and consume the food has been also hindered because you're just pecking at your food. So I love that aspect of it, and I'm going to talk about it from the human perspective. And what you said there, um, when you take the food being seeds that God has dropped, wisdom that God has dropped in this last year, are you still pecking at it? Come on. Are you still pecking at it? I mean, are you just still taking it by small quantities? Mm. Now, there's a pro and a con to it. The pro is at least you're eating you know, I used to look at my sister and I'm like, you, you're real slim and here you are pecking at your food, but at least you're eating. You're not starving, yeah. right? So yeah. there's a pro to it. Now, the con is it is not going to allow you to be full and to sustain the, the, the weight that you need to sustain to receive the nutrients that you need to receive it in time, right? Mm -hmm. It's already January. Time's mm -hmm. going to move fast. The wisdom that God gives you, why don't you just scoop it up and just take it in? Why don't you consume it? Why don't you receive the words that he's already given you as fast and as true? Why not just jump out on faith? But still, we peck at the word, but we want it to bring us a plentiful harvest. We want to just take bits and pieces of it, but we want it to do everything that we desire for it to do. So that's my question for you. Are mm. you still pecking at it? Are you still taking mm the pieces of wisdom, the things that God has showed you in this last season, as we transition now into 2021, are you still just taking it piece by piece and little by little? That, that causes malnourishment, doesn't it? Mm, mm, for a human, yeah. it does. For a bird, it's okay. But for a human, it causes malnourishment. So I, I kind of want to take it from that perspective as mm. well. Or is, are you still pecking at it? Mm. Uh, why not eat more? Why not eat more? Um, I love that uh, because in eating is what makes you stronger. It's what the body needs. Right. The yeah. nourishment of the food that you're eating. Um, it, it is some things, though, I believe that you need to maybe perhaps take in small dosage mm. that you can really understand and digest properly what's being shared. I believe there's some things, especially as it pertains to the word of God. 
that you can't digest and read it all take as much that you can at once because you're going to miss it. Um, and I believe there are some things that God has left behind uh, for us to chew on, for us to continue to peck at it and continue to eat in small dosage so that we can digest properly. I think at times if we consume a lot, we can risk choking mm -hmm. and risk, you know what I mean? Like so many different other elements of just consuming so much. So even the bird and the way that it eats also, I believe, um, goes to show, you know, some things you can consume, but yeah. there's other things that you may need to pick at because there's a lot there. Mm. So I want you to think about even when you see certain birds like um, uh, the, the the different birds that will uh, attack like the carcasses of different animals. Vultures. Right? Do that. What do you say? Vultures. Vultures and things like that. Ooh, mm -hmm. vultures. Mm. All right. But you have vultures that will come to um, eat on the, the dead things that has been left there. But you notice, again, they, they're, they're doing it. They're, they're ravishing the flesh. They're taking it apart. They're really going in um, and, and destroying that thing to what's left. You can't even tell what was there before um, because of the way that they, you know, eat and the way they consume things and, and understanding that. So we're talking about a bird. Here we're talking about a vulture that just ravishes things that mm -hmm. are dead and things that, you know, they just tear up. Whereas you have other birds um, that just, they peck at it. You know, they, they pull it apart, they digest it because they understand what I digest, I have to take back, mm -hmm. right? It's like they consume this thing, but they also understand that they may have young, that they have to take back this word, take back this food, take back this seed, but they break it down in a way so that when they regurgitate it back up, those who needed to hear it, those who needed to receive it can properly digest it. Mm -hmm. They're not just just going through, um, tearing it apart, ripping it up because they're missing the point. They're missing um, what God could be doing or sharing in that time while they're eating the word. Um, I believe the word, as the Bible speaks, is, is can be as meat uh, to us. Um, yeah. And sometimes there's things that even when meat is concerned, um, again, I know you may eat steak, but there's no steak on my plate. Please believe that. <laughs> However, I do understand there's some meat that you take and you cut. Right. You mm -hmm. take it in small doses. You don't eat it all at once. So even the idea of pecking deals with the small dosage. And that I believe sometimes it's necessary for you to properly digest it um, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So that's just another kind of the tie in as we're talking about eating and we're talking about the things that have been left behind for us to eat, such as the bread, such as the seed or any other things that God perhaps might have left for us. Mm -hmm. I believe it, it speaks to um, some things that we need to to consume and some things that uh, we may need to uh, peck at and go back later Chew on this for a while. And I'm going to go back later. He may give you that scripture that you may need to meditate on for this whole month. Yeah. That one verse of passage of scripture is something that you need to this. Go back and continue to peck some things because it is. Remember, when you're pecking what you're doing, you're pulling away some things. You know so, the word. You know the word that comes to mind when you keep saying pecking and pulling away at something. Uh, and I think this deals with the relations that we have with other people. It's mm -hmm. going to be the word consideration. Okay. Uh, the reason why I say consideration is that we, as um, people, um, brothers and sisters, um, husbands and wives, uh, coworkers, family members, um, we receive different types of feedback from everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes the things that someone might share with us, we either like it or we don't like it. Now, the Bible says that in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. Yeah. And the reason being is because your mind is not the only mind in the situation. So when you allow yourself to be open with people that you love, um, and even maybe someone that you don't love, but at least you know, if someone shares something with you, um, that you at least consider it. It's something that I believe in doing, not that we master it all the time, but that when you receive feedback on maybe a characteristic that you have, um, a habit that you have, something that a blind spot that mm -hmm. you may have that someone else has seen, uh, th the Lord's not always going to come to you through the Bible. He's not always going to come to you 
in a dream, he will come to you through people. And mm. they will share something with you that is for your betterment. And the worst thing that you can do is just turn away from it. You know, turn mm. your beak away from it. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to. I don't even want to listen to that. You said I'm this. You said I'm selfish. You're just a hater. Everybody's a hater nowadays. As soon as right. you get feedback, you're a hater. You know what I mean? Um, so, so, so you have that aspect of it. Uh, and then I think the other thing that you don't want to do, as my brother was speaking about, is you don't want to just dive in and just take every feedback that everyone has for you because that could help. That could cause you to lose your identity, to understand who you are. What, what are the things that God has been working on the inside of you? And, of course, you know that people won't always completely understand you just from, you know, looking at you or maybe from one scenario. They may, may make a mistake as well. So I would say that the best way to take advice, take wisdom, take even that which comes from God or from the people is to peck at it. Mm. Consider it. Just mm. take it piece by piece. See if there be any truth. And I'll think, see if there be any truth in it. Mm. Right? Mm. So that way you can correct and you can also improve yourself. So I, I want to kind of speak to that aspect. I think that some of you, you received yeah. some feedback from some people last year. Mm. You started to feel some type of way about certain things. Please drop, let's drop the uh, emotional impact of it. Um, you know, the old saying, can you handle the truth? Or, you know, actually, if you can't handle the truth, well, I'm going to say that you can handle the truth. Come I just on. need you to pick at it. Just pick Come at on. the truth. Come on. Mm, I love that. Pick at the truth. I, I love that. Consider it. Oh, my gosh. Um, really um, well done there. And I can see that. And I can visualize even from the, the quote from the movie, A Few Good Men there. Um, but I, I also want to, you said something, you talked about feedback. And here we are talking about consumption. We're Here we are talking about what you eat. Kind of a thing as it pertains to the bird and the beak and the pecking of mm -hmm. certain things is the ideal feedback. Think about mm -hmm. it. Feed. When you feed someone, you're giving them something, right? Mm -hmm. um, feedback. It, you know, you're giving them something that they can take back with them. Um, mm -hmm. you're giving them some things that they can take back and consider even. So when we talk about the ideal of feedback, we are giving you some things to take back to consider to be, is it some truth in that? Is it something that I need to do differently? Is it something that I perhaps need to change? Mm -hmm. um, so when we, I love the idea of feedback because it, it speaks to what we're talking about. The word feed is in there, but it's about what you give in order for someone to take back and so that they can now digest it so that they can process it in a way so that they could you know, um, be able to take it with them on uh, their next journey. So I love that idea of just being um, uh, considering the feedback we receive. Also understanding the feedback is a gift uh, yeah. as well. Um, but just knowing that it's, it's, you could be selective in what you eat. You can choose to you know, pick at certain things and pull back some of the layer, pull back the skin, pull tear at some of the meat that's there so that you can really enjoy it. Another type of thing, too, that I'm reminded of, and before we go to our next word, is even in being selective or picking at or pecking at your food, oftentimes it deals with savoring the moment, right? If you ever go to a nice restaurant and they, and they, mm -hmm. they bring out your dish, you don't just consume it very rapidly. No, no, at least for me, I take my time yeah. because it's, it's, I, I want to enjoy what I'm eating I, I want to enjoy this moment. I want to have this moment um, in, 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 at this time. And so it could be some things that you guys may be um, picking at. And, and it's for your enjoyment, but it's also for you to take advantage of the moment. You know, that live in that moment is, is mm -hmm. something else I will say to those yeah. of you that maybe is taking your time and pulling it back and savoring um, that. It's to enjoy the moment, be in the moment. And, yeah. and I believe it is distilled with the aspect of just enjoying uh, the guy. We're talking the word of God being what we eat, you know, yeah. be in the moment. Enjoy that verse. Don't be so quick to finish that chapter. Yeah. Enjoy it. Maybe put it down and come back later. You know, my favorite meal is seconds anyway. Yeah. So you know what? <laughs> you know what I mean? But go ahead. You know, that also says that also says that um, in, in the term of feedback to um, put yourself in the position to enjoy feedback. 
be a person that welcomes feedback. If you maybe were thinking, well, how do I change my mindset from being offended to actually receiving feedback and being able to take it to where it can actually help me? Um, that's one of the ways of doing that. Be in the moment to receive and to understand that if you're receiving feedback, it's because God is doing a process of improvement with you. Uh, you only give pro feedback to those that he wants to continue to improve. So maybe switch your mindset of how you see feedback. And, and I know this is not one of the words on our, on our list right now, but feedback. Think about the word play there. Feedback being the information that you get um, and, uh, and advice or the perception that someone might share with you about yourself or something that you did. And then also the word feedback is the noise that happens when something is too close and like radiology or not radiology, but with uh, technology and electronics, if you put the microphone too close to the speaker, uh, it will receive feedback. And that's when you're in church and you hear that, you hear that crazy noise, that's feedback. It's an annoying noise. So what will be your perception on your feedback? Will it be a process that you can enjoy as someone gives you something to help you improve? Or will you see feedback as the annoying noise of people talking and never improve? And I just want to leave you with this scripture. Remember, 2 Timothy chapter 4 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but mm. after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Itching ears meaning they want to hear what they want to hear, and the truth sounds like feedback, mm. annoying noise, and they mm. shall turn their ears away from the truth mm. and shall turn unto fables. Turn into the truth of God, and as the Lord uses people to improve you, don't turn away from that as well. I love that, um, ladies and gentlemen, and that is peck. That's peck. Uh, that is peck. That is the first word. Um, of the new year. It's dealing with PEC, but it also it deals with the feedback you receive. It, it deals with um, the things that you consume, but also being con consider of those things as well. And don't turn away from the sound doctrine because of the feedback uh, that we're talking about, that that white noise there. But I love that. Um, so if you're ready, man, this, are you ready for number two? I'm definitely ready for number two. Hey, if you haven't done it already, please share the broadcast and also click the follow button so that way you get to notified when we get on live so you can get right here right when we start. But yeah, let's get let's get ready for number two. All right, here, here we go, man. Number two. It's on me. Corner. You know, I know you're not backed into a corner when you see this word, man. So <laughs> I know what, what you got, man. <laughs> All right. Let's dive right into this one. Let's dive right in. So um, I'm pretty sure most of you, when you see the word corner, you start thinking of who's in my corner, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that I would say most people, not everyone's brain works like mine, but I think most people would say who's in my corner. You're kind of going to go in that direction, right? And maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see what the spirit says. Uh, but we know what that means, uh, the corner being someone who is on your side, mm -hmm. someone who is... Um, in your corner, when you think about that phrase, they are referring to boxing. And uh, it kind of makes you remember Rocky, stand, you know, sitting there when they go back to their corner and they're fighting and they're getting coaching from their boxing coach. Right. So, so that's definitely one. Obviously, the actual uh, definition of a corner, you've got a square and you've got the four uh, 90 degree um, parts of it, which is going to be the corner. Um, so a square has four corners. And, um, and, uh, and then, of course, you got the corner of a block. I mean, we can keep going. But le let's go with the corner of a boxing ring. I just see a boxing ring. So I'm going to go there. Uh, and as I mentioned, the coach, it just kind of, you know, was so apropos with what we talked about first with receiving feedback. See, I think the key thing is to understand who is in your corner and what is your corner saying? Mm. So it's going to tie right back into feedback. And I know it sounds like the same thing, but that's what we talked about. Let's peck on this thing just a little bit more. Let's meditate on it. Who is in your corner and what is your corner saying? What is your corner saying? In boxing, the person that's in your corner is your coach. And after each round, you will go back to your corner to receive more feedback about how the fight is going. 
you will see more perspective because they have a different perspective because you're in the fight. All you can see is punches, mm. but your corner can see how your feet are moving. Your mm. corner can see how your head is moving. Your corner sees how you are looking and your body language. They see your attack. They see your defense. They see a different perspective of the fight than you do. So who is in your corner and what is your corner saying? It's important to know what your corner is saying because they have a different perspective and for the simple fact that they're in your corner, they're on your side. So who is in your corner and what is your corner saying? I want to start off with that because we're in a fight and just because 2021 came in, brothers, I, I feel like most people think like, whew, 2020 is over. We are good. Everything's going to be all right. It's just round 2021. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it is round 2021. We are still in a fight, y'all. Mm. We are still in a fight. So don't stop listening to your corner. Make sure you know who's in your corner. The reason why we're here is because we want to be in your corner. We want the Holy Spirit to be in your corner because his perspective is going to help you in every area of your life, every fight that you come across, every financial battle, personal battle, emotional battle, psychology or psychological battle. It doesn't matter what it is. He's in your corner. And if you get knocked down, you can always take that rest in the corner so that you're ready for the next round. Mm. So that's how I'm going to kick off corner. Wow. Mm. Who's in your corner? Um, wow, like um, who's on your side? I love that aspect. I see the imagery there and I'm a huge Rocky fan. And so um, I just saw images of his trainer, Mick, um, in the, the earlier episodes of um, the Rocky. Also, um, as the other episodes came, being able to uh, see the dynamics of the training of those who was in uh, his corner. So I love that. I love the boxing element and you're in a fight, right? And we're talking to feedback because it's in the corner where the coach was able to provide feedback to the boxer of what they can do differently. Um, mm. They're able to see the, the fighter and how they're fighting, but they're also able to see the opponent. So they're mm. able to come at it from different perspectives to offer advice or feedback on what they can do to help them win the fight. But I wanna look at it differently because you have the ideal of feedback and those who are in your corner, but I wanna take it a different angle, right? Uh, right mm -hmm. angle, 90 degrees, okay. There you go. Um, so <laughs> I want to go a different direction. <laughs> I wanna go a different direction because um, I'm also reminded of another corner Mm -hmm. And as a child growing up, there were definitely times that I can remember where I was actually sent to the corner. Mm -hmm. There were some things that I was fighting with in class, be it my teacher or even another student, mm -hmm. <laughs> where I was told to go to the corner. You see, the like in school, too. what it represents is a moment of reflection. So as we're talking about feedback, yeah, you may be in a fight to where you have those on your side and those who are there to help you and give you ideas and give you strategies of what you can do differently. But there's also times in your life where you get sent to the corner and it's just you and God. Mm -hmm. And you see, when you get sent to the corner, you're isolated from everyone else. Yeah. And that's a moment for you to reflect on what you've done. It's a moment to reflect on understanding how your actions led to you being in this particular predicament. Yeah. I believe there's some things that God is saying to some of us that he's sending to the corner for you to be able to go there, just you and God, and be able to reflect on the things that you've done, taking accountability in your actions and what you can do differently. Because there's some times in life where you are being given people who are around you, like mm -hmm. the, the, the people in your corner in the boxing analogy that's gonna be able to help you. But there's also times where 
you're not going to receive that help that you think you need. And it's just going to be you. It's going to be you and God in the corner, being able to understand who you are, being able to reveal who you are, because I believe I also understand, too, in the Bible, there are many moments where God had people in the corner. Mm -hmm. God revealed himself to certain people, revealed people um, in a lot differently. But it was once they got aside from everyone else, once they got away and got isolated, that God was able to reveal some things about who they were. But it was in that corner where I began as a child to reflect on my actions. And I believe that one of the, the things about being in a corner by yourself mm. is that knowing that nobody else is there with you. Mm -hmm. Hearing the fun of the kids laughing and playing while you're there in the corner, being reminded of what you did and what you can do differently so that you're not in the same position. Yeah. And sometimes to be in the corner is necessary for growth. Yeah. We're talking about food, nourishment, feedback, uh, pecking at things, pulling away at things. And I believe it's in the corner that some things get pulled away, some layers mm -hmm. gets pulled back so that you can be able to see yourself differently. Because at the corner, you're facing a wall. Yeah. You're facing um, a, a place where you can no longer go forward, where you have to stop <laughs> and face yourself. Yeah. So and understand um, your actions. So I want to speak to that angle as it pertains to corner is going to the corner and having to um, reflect on those things um, and, and hopefully strategize on what you can do differently or how your behavior can change um, so that you can end up in a different location the next time. And so I want to speak to that. Um, wow. that I like I like that. I like that. And I can uh, definitely connect with that. Um, having been put and sent to the corner. Um, now, I'm not sure if other cultures do this, uh, but in the Haitian culture, um, not only do you go to the corner, but you mm. actually go to the corner on your knees. Mm. And, uh, and you stay on your knees in the corner. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there, stay on your knees in the corner. <clears throat> but, you know, the process of after you have been in the corner, is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have children and you are looking to not just punish them, but to help them learn as God is a good God and a good father, he wants us to learn, not just to punish us. You don't go through those seasons in the corner just to be punished, but to learn. One thing that you will ask your children after they come out of the corner is what do you know why you are in the corner? Do you understand now why I put you in the corner? What will you do now differently as I release you from the corner? See, it's a process that does require some illumination at the end of it. So that not only so you go back into the corner, but what's more dangerous is that mm. you leave the corner and still think the same mm. and still do the same thing. That's even more dangerous. Right. So so at that time, that's when you see the kids. You're like, I was in the corner because I lied. <laughs> right. And then they are able to do what? Face the truth of what they did. Right. You have to face the truth of why you were in the corner and understand why that's not good for you. And that is something that you come out with. And you share that out of your mouth because life and death comes out of the abundance of the mouth, mm -hmm. um, out, of, out of the tongue. And, um, and you being able to speak that truth is going to be something that's going to help you in your process outside of the corner. God wants you to be free roaming throughout the kingdom, throughout wow. the house. He doesn't want you stuck in the corner. He doesn't want to punish you just for no reason. Um, but when he puts you to sit down, like mm. Prophet Shabarish Butler say, take a seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was a different way, but I'll still take that phrase. When, <laughs> when, he, when, he when he tells you to sit down in the corner and to reflect, mm. um, there, there is a process and something that you want to see coming out. And you know what? It's so uh, similar uh, in a way of even with my example and my direction with the boxing ring is that after you come out of the corner, and you go into the next round, your 
performance should be different. The same thing is required. No one goes to the corner and then comes back out and is supposed to be doing the same thing. So the corner is definitely a place of transformation. Whether we look at it as a child or as a boxer, it is a place where you receive teaching and insight mm -hmm. and you come out of it having to be doing something different. So I'm hearing the Spirit say that some of you were put in the corner so that you won't make the same mistakes again, so that you won't put yourself in the same position again. Do not forget what you learned in the corner. So I definitely love that. Yeah, and here's the thing, bro, is if you look at what just transpired in the year 2020, mm -hmm. um, and I believe your wife has shared this, is that God sent everyone to the corner. Mm -hmm. Like we were isolated. Remember, because of this whole quarantine, that yeah. we were isolated in mm -hmm. a corner. And it should have been a time of self-reflection. It should have been a time of what are some things that I can do differently? Because during this time, you did not necessarily have those people in your corner because yeah. of the social distance. And so mm -hmm. you had to operate a little differently. And so I believe that that year should have been preparation and yeah. something that you should have taken on and to consider how can I move differently in this upcoming year? Yeah. What were some of the mistakes I made that I no longer uh, want to go down that same path? Because mm -hmm. now that I'm in this corner, now that I feel like I've been isolated and it's just me and God, what can I do differently? What are some things that we're looking to do differently? And this is why oftentimes people make these New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. They're making it a resolve to do things differently that they did that they didn't do before. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully this year we stick to them because we all understand the percentage of those people after about two weeks, they have thrown away their resolution um, and they don't do it any longer. Mm -hmm. But I think I, I just want to stay in that idea that what happened last year was no accident or coincidence. But I believe that was a timeout. You know, uh, you know how the Europeans say you go to you have a timeout. Uh, yeah. You go to the corner, basically, is what they're referring to. And that was just a time of self-reflection and get our priorities back in order so that a change can occur. But if there's repeated going back to the corner, mm -hmm. then that's not a mistake you made. That's a behavior. And now yeah. we have to deal with the behavior. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that has to come from within. That's a change of yeah. mindset, that's a change of how you see things. And that's an internal mm -hmm. uh, thing that we have to deal with at that moment. Yeah. If this continuation yeah. of, of going back and forth there. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to kind of cap it off with uh, something you said earlier when we first started this word is that notice that when you go to the corner, there's some key words there, go to the corner. It is the direction that is given and the child is walking frontward into the corner. You are facing while you're in the corner, the wall. Um, so in, in the, in the a atmosphere of spiritual things, um, you know, uh, a lot of, um, I believe it's Jewish or the uh, Israelites, they pray towards the wall. Um, so God represents that, um, you know, that aspect. So you are in the corner, you are facing the corner. Don't wait to learn until you're, well, don't wait until you're back into the corner mm. to finally start to listen. Unfortunately, a lot of us are like that. A lot of people will tap in real quickly. Oh, man. Yeah, I know I made some mistakes. I don't care what they're talking about. But when you are backed into a corner, now all of a sudden you will listen to everything. And you would have lost so much by then. You would have been damaged so much by then. Um, there's nothing that God can't take you back from. But you would have not had to do all of that had you just walked forward into the corner and listened and paid attention to what was being taught to you. Don't wait until you're back into mm. the corner. Mm. Mm. I love that, bro. Um, and that can go so many different ways, even in the aspect of being backed into the corner. Just going back to your box and analogy, uh, when your back's against the rope, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, it, it's what do you do at that moment in time? But I think mm -hmm. that's where we have the reflexes of you fight. Right. Um, you mm -hmm. move forward. You continue on because this is a fight and we have a lot more rounds to go. 2020 was just a round <laughs> 20. We're on round 21. Now, the fight yeah. is a continuation of things that you're going to be coming up against 
some mm -hmm. oppositions that could be in front of you that when your back is against the wall, your back is against the corner, is that what do you do there? Do you fold, do you fall, or do you mm -hmm. stand and move forward? Do you fight your way out of that corner? You know, mm -hmm. do you do you just throw in the towel? I'm reminded of the Rocky scene when he was telling mm -hmm. him to throw in the towel. Do you throw in the towel because you feel like you've been beaten up too much? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because again, when you go back to the corner, it's where your feedback is, it's where your coaching is, it's where your instructions are. But then when you step forward, remember, the boxer don't stay in the corner. You're only there for a period of time. And then you do what? You move forward. You progress and you face that thing head on. That corner yeah. was just a place of instruction. Mm. Mm -hmm. That corner represents a place of, of feedback there so that now that you have the instructions, now you can move forward. So oftentimes people backs are against the wall. It's because they backed up mm -hmm. and not move forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that we want you to take away over this year as it pertains to corner. Uh, you have us in your corner. We're on your side. God yeah. is on your side. We're telling you, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. You keep fighting. You keep moving forward. Even if that means at times in your corner, you don't have anybody that's there but you and God. And you're there to reflect and you're there to to figure out some things on your own. But keep yeah. going. Keep yeah. fighting, man. And that's that's why I want to leave you corner with. I like it. I like it, man. I think the corner is saying a couple of things and you, you kind of started it off. Let's let's keep it going there. So uh, what do you hear in the boxing corner? Go ahead. Y'all go ahead and go ahead and put it in the chat. What are some of the things that you hear in a boxing corner? Think about it. The boxing corner tells you to keep your hands up. Mm. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Right. The boxing corner tells you stay out of the corner. Don't get backed into the corner. Stay off the ropes. Keep moving your feet. I, here's something else. I mean, because that's some great feedback, but we also have some people that's been in our corner from day one. And mm -hmm. I wanted to share with the people what they've been saying. What's what's some of the, the advice that they've been saying in our corner? We have people like uh, what we have. We have um, Brother Roger Pritchard mm -hmm. in our corner. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just stay in the corner long enough to hear from God. Good wisdom. Amen. That's advice right there. Those are the people who are in our corner telling us some things you need to do. Also, mm -hmm. Sister Valerie Pritchard is saying the corner can be a little uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? I understand that. So they're, they're giving us some advice, giving you guys some wisdom there. Those are people that are in your corner who's who's praying for you, who's giving you the sound advice. You know, um, uh, another, you know. Let me put one up. Let me put one up. All right, go, see, ahead. go ahead. I just in front of you. You're going to put your wife. I'm putting mine first. <laughs> We get advice from everywhere. There you go. My beautiful wife says, remember your training. Remember Absolutely. Your training. You, want to, you want to remember what you learn in the boxing gym when it's time for the real fight. Remember what you learn. That is amazing. Thank you, love. Yeah. Uh, again, go ahead and say my love put it out there. You got to bob and weed. Mm -hmm. And so that's the training that we're talking about. When you talk, you would learn some things. You were yeah. taught you some things during this season. So when you're face up against that thing, you know how to bob and weave, bob and stick weave. and move. All these are all great things that our Amen. corner has been sharing throughout the broadcast. And so we appreciate you guys and for Amen. rocking with us, uh, for uplifting us and for praying uh, for us as well. So we want to shout you out. That's some of the things that was shared in our corner as uh, we went back there, man. But um, I'm ready for the last one, man. How are you? I'm I'm feeling like screaming, Adrian, but <laughs> hey, because if I can change, you can change. Yeah. Everybody can change, okay? <laughs> and so that's what we're talking about here, man. Just having a little fun here. But this is our that's last right. word. Last that's word of the day, man. Here we go. Fox. Mm. Fox. Okay. Okay. Come on now. Fox. Okay. Um, man, that's that's an interesting way of ending. Uh, today right fox mm -hmm. you know instantly you know what comes to mind i know it's on me with this one is uh my wife mm -hmm. she's a fox you know that's <laughs> like that old school vernacular of saying someone's hot someone mm -hmm. is a, a sexy there's a fox so i want to just say that okay uh it has nothing to do with anything other than i know she's watching so uh, i gotta okay. make sure i get my cool points up you know every day um but fox Fox. Um, the fox is um, an animal that oftentimes you will see out um, in the wild, right? Um, 
the fox is is is, is an animal that you normally see um, in a role in packs, right? Um, as well, and I believe uh, again the fox. I could be wrong, but I believe the fox is in the same family as like the dog. Um, in the canine family, I could be wrong, but I think so. Uh, but anyway, I just think of when I see the word fox there, I think of um, an animal that's that's in the wild. That even when we're talking about food, when we talk about um, the the feedback or um, taking advantage of um, certain things, resources, I'm also reminded of the fox and even how they strategize on how they eat you know, how they maneuver through yeah. in order to um, to get their food. Um, also, you know, the, the the ideal of a fox as someone who's like kind of slick, you know what I mean? Uh, what is that cartoon? I can't even think. Um, Swiper, here we go, boom, just hit me. On Dora the Explorer, I have three kids, by the way. Okay, I never heard of that one, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Dora the Explorer is, a, is a, again, a cartoon my kids used to watch back in the day, and the opposition, oh, come on, Holy Spirit. The opposition to Dora, his name was Swiper. Swiper was a fox. So Swiper the Fox will always try to impede or impact whatever it was that Dora was trying to do. Mm. And he would always try to just take away the things that um, that she had tried to to do or whatever the adventure that she was on. Uh, she would always try or he, I should say, will always try to come and, and swipe. And then she would her whole catchphrase is swiper, no swiping. Um, that's what her thing was, because the fox will always try to take. We'll always try to take. And so I want to just kind of start there for my um, uh, listeners out there, the audience out there that may be familiar with the show Dora the Explorer and understand uh, who the fox was, the slick one, the sly one who would always try to to oppose whatever it was that uh, she was doing. And so I'm also reminded of the idea and we've been talking about boxing. Um, we talked about the examples of even the first word with the vultures versus the other birds and how they attack. Um, in the boxing ring, you have that opposition or your opponent that attacks you a certain way and you have your corner that's giving you the advice. So it's giving you the feedback. Um, and I also look at the fox as that opposition that may try to come up against to take what God has left for you. So even if there were bread tracks, even if there were seeds there, the fox's objective and goal was to swipe it, was to take it away before you even got to it. Come on, Lord. So I believe there, there are some things, even in this year, the things that even happened in years past, mm -hmm. that there's been some things that was taken away before you even seen it. There's some things that was the enemy tried to take away and swipe before you even had an opportunity to get what was left for you. Mm. I believe there's things, even if I can go deep in that, is our identities. Um, was stolen, was swiped away from us because if we understand and truly who we were and yeah. who we are, it would cause us to change our behavior. It would cause us to change some actions on our behalf if we knew who we were, but our, our identity was swiped. Yeah. Our identity was was taken away so that we lost track of who we are. We are a king's kids, right? We are a royal a descent, but because of our, our identity being swiped or being taken away by the fox, by the enemy, by the individuals working on the behalf of the, uh, I would say, kingdom of darkness, just for the sake mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. We've lost that. And so we're like Dora is exploring all these various options and terrains trying to to make it in this world. So I want to just speak there about the fox, it, the dealing with the fox as it being an opposition um, to us progressing and, and taking things away from us that God perhaps might have left um, for us in, 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 in the past. Powerful. So let's 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 start there. But what you got, bro? Powerful, man. That's powerful. And I'm not familiar with Dora the Explorer, but it looks like our whole viewers are. <laughs> they are they are knowing the Dora the Explorer, the swiper that you that you speak of. And, uh, and understanding that there is an opponent 
Um, of course, you know, you're going back to your corner. There's someone in your corner. You're fighting. You're receiving all of this training because there is a real opponent in the other corner. So that word fox to help us to identify that opponent was so key. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my brother, for sharing that. And what the Spirit dropped on me was that this opponent that you're fighting on, that you're fighting, this fight that you are in, one of the reasons that he is training us and helping us so much is because this fight will be televised. Mm, mm, mm. If you're a boxing fan, you know where to find a boxing match. It's on Fox. This fight will be televised. Your life, the things that you learn after certain seasons, and the Lord sends you back out into the corner, out of the corner, it, it will be seen. And it's so easy to understand that because one of the things that we see after the Lord humbles you mm. is that he will elevate you. Mm. And if the Lord elevates you, that means that there are more eyes and more ears that can see you, just like a TV. And it's so important if the Lord is going to put you in an elevated position, in a promotion position, that when you represent one one thing that I love about boxers is that they have their robe on and mm -hmm. on the back of their robe, it shows what they represent. Some of them mm -hmm. will put their national flag. Some of them will put their family name. So you go into this boxing ring, into every area of life in the business world, in marriage, in church, in just the every aspect of life, the kingdom, is there and you are wearing a robe of righteousness with the Lord's name on it, Yahweh. Mm. Mm. And you encounter different fights. Mm. He's not throwing in the towel. He's the only one that can throw in the towel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But he's not throwing in the towel, so you gotta fight. And he's trained us from past seasons to be able to take on and to maneuver around this fox. It is broadcasted. People are seeing how you respond in your fight. People are watching to see um, what you will do in the next round. The, uh, the Bible says that no one lights a candle and places it under a bowl, but they put it on a hill, or, uh, or I believe it's probably on a candlestick so that the whole house can see, right. or that right. the whole world can see. There's different versions of that. Yeah. So I think of Fox TV. I think of the broadcasting network that shows the fight, right? And your life is like Fox TV. It's going to show the fight. And you're going to be many viewers. And I don't want that to intimidate anyone because you've been well trained um, by one of the best trainers. Uh, I don't want that to intimidate you or for the enemy to cause you to feel that um, to, to kind of buckle under the pressure. You know, some, some people, they say they buckle under the light, right? When they, mm -hmm. they're training, they're doing great, but when it's time to be in front of people, oh, no. So some of you, before you even get to your promise, you might get a little nervous because you realize that there will be more people watching me, more mm -hmm. people who will see me, and little mistakes can be seen, right? When you're in the boxing ring, you're the only one there. If you make a mistake, everyone can see it. And it's so easy to criticize. Right. We, we sit down and we watch football games or we watch boxing matches on our couch and we're saying, why won't he just move his head? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why won't he just get out of there? Because we're not in the fight. So we easily criticize people that are in the fight because they're on TV. We can criticize every little mistake that they make. Mm -hmm. But I don't want that to get you nervous. I don't want that to make you um, nervous about your next season and this next round. Even if you make some mistakes and you take some hits, you've been well trained to win the round and it will be televised. The Lord is elevating you so that others will see his glory. So mm. this, I wanna, you know, that's really all I'm probably going to say about that one. Um, that's all I had.
No, man, that's that's good, man. I love that. I love just the idea of the visualization of the road and what who you repping, right? On the back. Yeah, right? you want to rep your set. Yeah, yeah, rep your set. You know what it is, you know, kingdom. Uh, but I love that because again, even the boxers, when they come in, they come in with a different swag. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like the boxers who they they know who they are, they know who they represent, and they're coming in already, you know what I'm saying, with a whole different element, a different vibe. But really quickly, before we um, finish with this last word, I'm reminded of another fighter um, in the Bible. You might have heard of him by the name of Samson. Mm. Samson was a strong fighter. Um, it was also some things that God um, isolated him from because as a, a Nazarite, there were some things he couldn't do. There were some things he couldn't take part of, like the, the caucus there, as we made mention of the, um, the birds earlier, the vultures that would take in. He couldn't go inside of anything that was dead. Right. There were some things he was uh, restricted and isolated against um, because that's where strength lie was in his hair. But I remember about Samson, part of Samson story. And we're talking about foxes. I'm just going to tie it all together was mm -hmm. that he did just that. Um, against the Philistines, if you remember the story, he tied together the tails of what? Foxes. And he tied them up together, put fire to their tails and allowed them to go ahead and run to destroy um, the, 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 the fields of the Philistines that were there. It was a strategic wow. move on his end, but it was the ideal of him tying together the things that opposed other people. He tied them up. He set it ablaze and he sent it back. Um, to the field to destroy um, the mm. crops that were there. And so I was instantly reminded of that. And we're talking about um, the boxer. We're talking about fighting and understanding that this is a round, just another round. Um, ding, ding, right? This is just another um, round that we have to go in. But we've been trained, as you say before, the best trainer, the Holy Spirit has trained us and equipped us with things. He has placed people in our corners to give us that wisdom, that sound advice so that we take the feedback and be able to operate and move a little differently and strategize of what's needed. Pause. And so I want, go ahead. Pause a second. Pause a second. Did y'all hear yeah. that? And, and the Holy Spirit is, is so, so strategic. So you talked about Samson yeah. and his yeah. win and how yeah. he won. Yeah. He tied a fox tail, fox yeah. tail as a fighter um, around those Philistines, set it ablaze. Right? Yep. And that kind of ties in our, our boxing thing or in the fox. We, we can't talk about Samson unless we talk about the loss as well. Do y'all remember how Samson lost? Yeah. He lost because he had a fox, Delilah. And she kept, watch this, I, watch this, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know he where you're going. Him. How did she get to his strength? She kept pecking at him, pecking at him. What's the secret to your strength? She kept pecking at him. Mm. Tell me, and, and he, he lied to her the first time. He lied to her the second time because eventually, if something keeps pecking at you, it will get to you. Mm. And that was his loss. So we see his victory. We all see his loss mm. all in this fight. And his fight was televised. Where did he end up? In front of all of his enemies bound between two columns because she kept pecking at him mm, mm. fellas watch out for the foxes <laughs> pecking at you come on man what oh come on um here's here's some my wife put up too oh my gosh this oh we she yeah, said corner. <laughs> catch the foxes for us because the little foxes that ruin the vineyards mm -hmm. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards. Mm -hmm. I love that. Samson's, his story, though he had a lot of great victories, one thing that gets often highlighted more so than any other victory was his fall, his loss. Mm -hmm. And that is because of the woman, the fox, Delilah, just pecking at mm -hmm. him and continue to pick at him. So he revealed to her where his strength lied. And I and missed one word. My wife reminded yeah. me the other word that I missed. She, she was in his corner. Come on. So she remember. Would, here's the thing. Because people in your corner, what they're, what they're, they're in your ear. In your ear. 
They in your ear whispering. Uh, Season is weird. Well, then you say something about people being the tickle, the mm -hmm. itching ears. Yeah. Who's whispering in your corner? Who's whispering in your ear to continue to peck away at where your strength lies in order to take advantage and to see you fall? Wow. Ooh, I'm, there's so many people. Oh my gosh. There's, I'm not going to name the name, but we all know a very well known um, preacher um, who, you know, had a very public fall from grace. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it dealt with <laughs> the women, the, the foxes who were pecking at him that he fell. Um, and it, it was just something that we all saw a powerful preacher, a powerful, strong, who did mighty things. But what's often got blew up was the fact that he fell. He fell from grace. He made a mistake. He allowed the things of people to get into his ear. Those, you know, have me thinking, why wasn't there anyone else in his corner? Where was his other team at? You know what I mean? That he allowed certain things to get into his ear. But that was just reminded of that. And we talked about Samson and, 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 his fall, his loss dealt with somebody's in his ear who was in his corner. Um, he just asked Bex a question for year 2021. Who's in your corner? In your corner. What advice are you listening to and taking heed to? Um, that's something that I guess in this time of reflection that we think about is who's in our corner. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, that hmm. is all three that's where man playing. that was powerful bro wow yeah. Thank you like you, we can't make this stuff up people like we can't like how the holy spirit tied everything how that's not on us bro the first word was, bro, the first word was peck i was like you got it <laughs> <laughs> i mean come on like seriously bro but that's what i love about yeah. the word of god i love god i love the holy spirit he is the best trainer because yeah. he's the one that's in our ear Mm -hmm. He's given us the words to share with you guys. Yeah. We're not yeah. doing this on our own. That's yeah. he's in our ear, sharing yeah. what he wants to say to his people. And so I love and that. You know what's so key is that uh, the Holy Spirit, just like that coach, is telling you specifically what you need for your fight. Yeah. Um, these are not words that are just random. These are words for your situation. I know you found yourself in this situation, um, and in this message. Um, if you are listening to this broadcast, you found yourself. The Holy Spirit found you in this broadcast because uh, he's seeing exactly what's happening in the ring and he's going to help you to um, go through that. So uh, with no further ado, that's wordplay. It is time now for the bonus round. We're not going to keep you too much longer, but we need that bonus word. Y'all know how this works. Go ahead and drop your word in the in the chat. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the most random word from our audience and we're going to use it just to tie everything in now as i've told you before if you use the word dealing with boxing or samson we probably not going to use it we probably not going to use it we're going to use the most random of words so be as random as you would like because um we we believe that the holy spirit um will still prompt a word but go ahead and put whatever in your spirit remember again tap in with us every sunday now at 12 p.m. noon time, high noon. Y'all meet us right here uh, for wordplay tomorrow morning. For those that will meet me at 7:30 a.m. If you feel led to meet me and let's talk about your business, uh, tap in. Of course, Wednesday we've got Word of the Day Wednesday, and then Friday night my brother brings you the Word um, with Friday Night Life, an in-depth teaching of what we talked about, and it's going to be good this week. I know that because I mean, just look what just happened. I think he's already got the message prepared. Listen, so y'all tap in Friday nights at 7 p.m. And of course, seven, uh, Saturday, Spirit Led Saturdays with Tavares Butler, where he will always bring you a prophetic word based off this episode. Uh, listen, keep pecking at this word right here. And uh, we just want to continue to feed God's people. So y'all join us. So we got some words. Brother, I'm going to pass it to you to choose whichever one you decide. All right. So this is our bonus round. So we got a couple of things. Um, it's in our corner, some words that have been shared for us to, to speak on. And so um, let's see, what, what are we going to go with today? All right, mm -hmm. let's see. So I got something. I got something that we're going to, you know, take us off with um, today. And uh, let's go with this. Puzzle. Puzzle. Okay. Puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. 
All right. So um, let's let's kind of put it all together because we see all the different pieces that's already have been um, shown before us yeah. is um, the puzzle of, of what this message is referring to. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just pick up um, and start there. I see a piece in my mind of what this image or what this puzzle is going to look like. And that's the thing about the puzzle is even though there oftentimes are different pieces to the puzzle, um, one thing I know for me, and it helps me when I'm putting together a puzzle, especially a jigsaw puzzle, is that I'm also always referring back to the box. Mm -hmm. The box, the box is the image of what it should be, even though it does not look like it right now. If I keep pecking at it, if I keep working on it, if I keep putting different things together, eventually that image is going to appear. Eventually the things that were broken up in my life, the pieces of my life that were scattered in different places. If I just continue to look at the box, look at um, uh, the image of what it should be, I'm able to then put the pieces together the same way this message kind of came together. There were different pieces that God dropped for us hmm. and we were able to see it. And then we're able to then take that and be able to see the full picture, but we didn't see yeah. it in the beginning. And yeah. oftentimes the puzzles, you don't see what is going to be, but you, you peck at it, you work on it until it comes together. And oftentimes what you do is while you're working, you're starting on the outside or you're starting working from outside inward. Oftentimes mm -hmm. like you get that corner piece. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. You get the corner and you start working on the edges and then you start filling in the middle. You start putting things together in the middle um, until you're able to see it in full um, scope. And so I just mm -hmm. want to speak to those different things that happen in your life. I know me personally, there's some things that has happened over the years that were puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. And at the time, as it was happening, I didn't understand. I didn't understand how does this piece work in my life? How is it me moving and going to this place and coming back? How does that, like, I don't understand. I, I can't see the image because I lost track of the box. The, 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 the visual of my life is not my own, but it's of God's. It's different things that have happened perhaps in your life that you don't understand, but they're pieces to a bigger picture. Mm. The puzzle oftentimes, again, you don't see it until you start working on it, right? You have to work on it. We talk about self-reflection. We're talking about getting in a moment um, to where you isolate yourself to really be able to see some things differently. And so the puzzle to me represents just that it is a period of your life where you're just putting together the pieces, recollecting um, those moments in your life that has happened and be able to see how God is going to use that to, big, uh, to make a bigger picture. Yeah. And so that's where I have for the puzzle um, as it pertains to what we've been talking about today. Awesome. Awesome. Um, great way. Um, and uh, whew, this has been good. This has been good. So uh, the puzzle pieces, um, putting them together. And you kept saying something, uh, you know, as you talked about the process of putting the puzzle together is you may not know where to put the pieces. So you kind of have a process of how you're trying to put it together. You don't know how it fits. You have to go back to the vision. You have to go back to the picture to be able to understand what it should look like. And I heard that. And I also was thinking about the fact that when you're in a fight, if you're in a real good fight, you got in a good fight, you got hit a couple of times, you end up getting hit. And, um, and that can make you also a little woozy, confused, puzzled. Confused, puzzled, yeah, that's, that's where it's at. See, if you don't have all the pieces, you can be confused, you can be puzzled mm -hmm. on how it's supposed to look. If you're in a strong fight and you've been hit a couple of times, uh, you can be confused or puzzled on which way to go. So I keep seeing the word puzzled in that way, denoting to confusion, and that the enemy is trying to bring confusion. Remember that the word says that the Lord is not the author of confusion. See, he brings you the picture the enemy wants to confuse it. Um, he brings you to the fight and tells you you're going to win. The enemy wants to confuse you that you're losing. So we just want to speak against every spirit of confusion that is trying to 
get you looking in all other types of directions, um, taking a perspective that is not that of the Lord. Um, especially here at the beginning, I, I could see why the enemy would want to confuse you right in the beginning, right, right at the beginning of the year, right? Uh, so be mindful of that confusion and, uh, and speak against it. Speak against your mind that you have a sound mind. Uh, it says that the Lord is not the author of confusion, but he gives us, um, um, and he's not the spirit of fear. He gives us the uh, spirit of a sound mind, a power and a sound mind. So um, make sure that you uh, understand that the Lord has given you clear vision in this year of 2021. And everything that seems confusing, if you have to meditate on something, if you have to peck on something that the Lord is giving you, just go to the corner and do it with the Lord. So that way you can come out with clarity. The opposite of confusion is going to be clarity. Clarity of the picture, the full picture of the puzzle. Clarity of what you need to do next. And, uh, and I think that's what the Lord wanted to show us throughout this process is that confusion may come, but I have brought you clarity. I have brought you light. And uh, we want to leave it off that way. So thank you for sharing and uh, joining with us. Uh, it is always a pleasure to have you all in the midst. Um, please share this broadcast. So for those who weren't able to catch it, they can catch it on the other end. And uh, again, Happy New Year to you all. Uh, we are just excited about what the Lord is going to be doing um, through you and through us in this broadcast and on this Need a Word page. Uh, so continue to tap in. We love that you guys are here and always a part of the message. This is the only place that I know that you can just interrupt the pastor with your thoughts and say, you know what, this goes with your message too. Uh, so uh, it's fun. I love to do that because I love to preach with the pastor. So this is the only place where you can really be interactive. That was really a compliment to really interactive with the message and to be in partnership with the Holy Spirit of what he's saying because he's going to drop it into your spirit as well. So I love this aspect, uh, that aspect of, uh, of what the Lord guided us to do here. So continue to join us with that. Uh, any final words from you, brother? Yeah, man. Um, amazing. Amazing stuff for us always, man. Um, everything tied together perfectly, fit just right. Um, mm -hmm. And so we appreciate everyone who's been a part of uh, this journey that my brother and I has been on these last few months. And we're excited because we got some new and exciting things. Hopefully you're able to tune in tomorrow yeah. for my, my business um, with JD as he just breaks down and shares some things in a practical sense as it pertains to your business um, yeah. from entrepreneurs that are out there or looking to get into that 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 ring, right? That boxing yeah. ring um, mm -hmm. in that area. So we look forward for you um, joining um, us tomorrow morning also as well. We love the feedback we've gotten from our um, word of the day Wednesdays, as well as our Friday night lights by yours mm -hmm. truly being able to bring forth the word. So you already know, as you shared earlier, JD, man, I, my wheels are turning Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? about Friday, about what we talked about. You know, I may even dabble and dab into Samson a little more, you get a little yeah. deeper into that story. Yeah. Um, so something um, to be uh, mindful of catches on Friday night and obviously our Spirit Let Saturdays. That's one of our newest things yeah. that uh, we've been getting a lot of great reviews. Shout out Fred to my like wildfire. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's he, he's on fire with with the word, man. And so um, we're excited for what God is doing for this new year. We appreciate you guys rocking with us, man. So we're gonna go ahead and give you guys back your Sunday. And yeah. um, again, we appreciate you. And until next time, again, uh, pray for us as we pray for you. Um, but we look forward to seeing you on the the other side. Let's just say that. All right. All right, guys. Take care.